Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. Greetings listeners, Meat Hook Jim here. I'm flying solo this week, as while Donnie was out celebrating his wife's birthday with hockey, I was in Hamilton, Ohio, at Future Great Wrestling's Origins 2. There are some highlights from the show, as well as a few interviews with some of the wrestlers. Hope you enjoy it. Greetings listeners, Meat Hook Jim here. I am live at Future Great Wrestling flagship show origins 2 we are in the middle of a tlc match between the high heels of justice and heavy metal viking hooks and the big or the bold the beautiful and the brannigan right now it has just been a complete chaos throughout the ring i got jacob bros got a hold of big booty brad slammed him into the apron we've got hooks in the middle of the ring Getting ready to put a chair shot to Brannigan again. Oh, he's setting up a chair. Let's see. Uh, and on the far side of the ring, you got Macchiato, Mac Daddy, Che Solo dealing with Ricky Glam. The chaos, it's just hard to keep track of all this. It's just amazing. I wish you could see this. This has been a phenomenal show so far, and there's a lot more to go. Let's see what's going on here. Um, Matt Brannigan is busted open bad. He is bleeding freely. Uh, comp- compliments of the heavy metal Viking hooks. Big Booty Brad's got Jacob Rose now into the well, Rose reverses it. Jacob Rose is busted open too. I can't see uh, if Shea Solo Shea Solo is not yet, but well, it is just I can't keep track of everything that's going on. There's action going all over the ring. Uh, right now, Matt Brannigan is the is the proverbial crimson mask. Uh, Jacob Rose isn't far behind him. They're double teaming up on the high heels of justice on the far side of the ring. The referees are just, you know, beside themselves trying to steer traffic around here. It's a false count anywhere match, and these guys are all over the place. Heavy metal hike Viking Hooks just got a chair to his back, courtesy of Matt Brannigan. Ricky Glam just ate a table. And it looks like uh, Bold, Beautiful, and Brannigan are getting the upper hand. There's glitter all over the ring from the, the beginning of the match. Now Chase Solo is trying to choke Ricky Glam out with his suspenders. And Ricky's bounced off a table but did not go through the table. So Chase going to try again. Looks like he's going to line him up. And Ricky Glam just went through the table. The table just broke in half all over Ricky Glam. Ricky looks to be in a bad way. Chase Solo is standing tall right now. Big booty Brad's getting a boot to the throat. Jacob Rose is over by the announce team. I don't know what he's doing. Looks like he's going for another ladder. And, uh, you know, this is just utter chaos. The crowd is going crazy over this. You can hear him in the background. Brad's using that big booty against Chase Solo, and he's kicking Matt Brannigan. Brannigan goes over the top rope. Big booty Brad starting to get a comeback here. Uh, Forearm to the back of Chase Solo. And we've got Jacob Rose piled up there, and it's a double noggin knocker. Jacob Rose is down. Chase Solo's struggling. I wish you could see this. You know, I've seen big shows. I've seen small shows. But this uh, independent wrestling promotion, Future Great, has got some really great talent going on. Uh, Big Booty Brad's bringing in another ladder. Several ladders have been introduced during this match. And Shea just ate a ladder, and so did Jacob Rose. Big Booty Brad knocks them both down with that big booty, and now he's standing tall. Ricky Glam's looking the worst for wear. Hooks is on the side of the ring, and he is just a bloody mess. Brad's carrying the team now. It looks like Hooks just put Chase Solo through the table in the corner closest to me. Uh, nobody's really moving really, really fast now. There's a lot of blood going on. Ricky Glam looks like he's getting to his feet. Chase Solo 
holding his ribs, screaming in pain. I don't think Rick Bland's done with him. No, he's not. Uh, Hooks is just stalking. He's coming up behind him. It's time for another table. Hooks isn't messing around this time. I don't call him the heavy metal Viking for nothing. Ricky shows a ladder in the Chase Solo's midsection, and Hooks is taking the ladder over. He's going to set it up in the middle. Ricky and Shay are going back and forth. We got Jacob Rose and Big Booty Brown. And Ricky with a kick to the back. Chase Owens. Oh, Chase Owens right here in the corner next to the security guard. Big double axe handle to the back. Ricky's just. Oh, uh, and Shay comes up with an elbow to the midsection and a rake of the eyes. You got this, Tom! And now Shay, for no reason, hit the security guard. This is getting out of control. All kinds of bloody faces in the ring. It's Hooks facing down. Grant again. Ricky with another kick to Shea Solo's ribs. And Bryce, the security guard's down on one knee, but he's recovering. Ricky, another kick to the back of Shea Solo. This is seriously personal to Tim Hills, too. Big Booty Brown and Jacob Bowles are going at it on the other side of the ring. Hooks just took a forearm to the chest uh, off of a chair. Brannigan is just, there is all kinds of blood in Brannigan. He's bleeding the worst out of anybody here. And I look over here and Ricky, Ricky just got a chair to the midsection by Jay Solo. Brannigan, Brannigan just wrestling up to a table. Hooks just backdropped Brannigan right through a table on the far side of the ring. And Brannigan's holding his rear end going, ow. On the other side of the ring, we've got Jacob Rose standing on a table that's swung from the security rail to the ring. And he's going back and forth with Big Booty Brad. And Hooks just speared Brad off of that table onto another table on the floor right in front of the announce station. Matt Brannigan is still down. That was crazy. What an amazing match that was. All right, listeners, this is Meat Hook Jim at the Wrestle Horror Podcast, sitting here in the future great wrestling arena in Hamilton, Ohio. Origins 2 is just finished. What a phenomenal show it was. The table, ladders, and chairs match was off the chain. And, of course, I'm sitting next to one of the participants, Ricky Glam. Ricky? How you doing, baby, baby? You know the sky and the moon. A gloom, you know, because we beat them like buffoons, baby, baby. Nobody can say it quite like Ricky. It was an amazing match. Ricky, uh, you guys got, I mean, what can I say? It was it was brutal. It was brutal, baby. But, you know, after all the things they done to us, we had to pay them back, baby. It's just, it was our time. It and was it, our time for sure. It definitely was a lot of blood flowing. Um, Matt Brannigan, I think, got the worst of it. Definitely. I don't know who got him, but I'm glad they did. He hit me with that chair, and I thought my shoulder was never going to come back into place two weeks ago. So I'm happy. Yeah, uh, you guys were triumphant. It was a, a feel-good moment, but it was a bittersweet moment because your tag team partner is going on to, to do something better with the United States government. Uh, what does that mean for the high heels of justice? Well, when he comes back, full you know right back to it but until then it's kind of put on hold and i'm gonna have to figure out what i'm gonna do next but you know sky's the limit anything's possible and i'm just gonna be rocking and rolling playing shows doing my thing baby baby that's right baby baby <laughs> so um tell me a little bit about ricky glam how long you've been doing this almost 10 years 10 years and um if I'm March, March, it'll be 10 years. Okay. I took a six-year break, and then I came back, and, yeah, it'll be 10 years. Okay. And uh, there's no one quite as flashier, as unique as you 
in the current roster here at FGW, in my opinion. Thank you, baby, baby. You know, I just try to, you know, bring up some class to all these people out here. You know what I'm saying, baby? You know, you got you to gotta look sharp. You got to dress the part. You know what I'm saying, baby? Oh, I agree, you know, because I, myself, being a child of the 70s and 80s, I completely relate to Ricky Glam Well, entirely. you know, if you go to Hollywood right now, everybody in Hollywood dresses like this already, baby. This is the current fashions of L.A. right there on the Sunset Strip, baby. Everybody looks like me. Fabulous. How can I argue with that? There is no argument. It's 100% the truth, baby. Palm trees and me, that's where it'll be. You know what I'm saying, baby? I hear you. Since uh, this obviously is an audio podcast, I'm sure you can find Ricky Glam on social media. Oh, yeah. I'm on Facebook. And, um, yeah, I'm on Facebook. You're on Facebook. Ricky Glam, R-I-K-K-I, Glam, G-L-M, him. Come on down. Right on. Okay, Ricky, I appreciate you taking a few minutes to sit down and talk to me. Again, great match tonight. Glad to see you didn't get too bloodied up. No, I'm glad, too. (laughs) But for the other guys, uh, Hooks, oh, my gosh. Poor Hooks, you know. But he was right there with you. Team captain, you know, he made sure we made it through. Well, you know, I think the bold, the beautiful, and the Brannigan deserved it. They did. 100%. I don't want to say nothing too, you know, I don't want to say nothing bad because they're people, but they were just bad people. That's all you can say, just bad people. Well, there's bad people and there's good people, and you're one of the good ones. That's right. Thank you, baby. We appreciate it, Ricky. No problem. According to the ring by the prophet of pain, Amos, from Fairfield, Ohio, the pretty little psycho, Shana Reed. Super Zeta Memorial Championship belt. It's been a tournament that has gone over several weeks, and the finalists, the pretty little psycho Shauna Reed and Logan Blackheart, they lock up in a collar over t- Elbra Toya and reversing arm drag takedowns. forearm to Shauna's face. Arm whip out of the corner. She bounces off, ducks under a leg. And now it's oh, oh these long legs. She steps right over that um, knuckle grip. Leapfrogs over Logan. Logan leapfrogs over her. Now we're going to go back to the hands. Um, I don't even know what to call that. But she's got them rolled up. And it's a one count for Shauna. taunting Ripper Blackheart instead of concentrating on her opponent, Logan. Sharp forearm to the chest. Arm whip out of the corner. Logan's in the corner. 
Shauna goes for a charge. Logan catches her. Head scissor takedown out of the corner. Beautiful. Shauna's draped over the top rope. Oh, and she reverses that into a DDT on Logan. Only one count on Logan. Shauna sets him up for a quick snap suplex. And she goes, no, she was going for a pin, decided to go for the beat down. And she's arguing with the referee. Logan rolls out from underneath. Shauna throws Logan into the middle turnbuckle. She throws him into the top turnbuckle. And there's those chops that I've heard so much about with Shauna. They are sharp. She runs him into the turnbuckle. And Logan goes down like a sack of potatoes. Shauna's up on the top rope. She's on the top turnbuckle. And she's going for the cross body. Logan's down. Two, only a two count. Shauna seems like she's getting a little bit frustrated. She takes Logan, sets him up on the ropes, arm rip, and Logan hooks himself on the top rope and dumps Shauna over the rope as she charged him. Logan, a flying form, knocks her off the apron, and she's on the ground. Logan's prepping for something here. And it looks like he's going to take a dive through the middle rope right on to Shauna, up against the guardrail. Shauna is down, and Amos is covering her. Logan. Who has the better jacket? Let them fight. Logan throws her, throws her back into the ring. Springs her to the top rope and drops a knee into her side. He's going for the cover. He gets a two count. Shauna looks like looks like he's in for up, and she suckered Logan in there a little bit. He starts beating down on her. Amos is watching from the sidelines, waiting for his opportunity to get involved. I think. Logan's got Shauna now, and he's setting her up. Maybe an arm whip off the rope and a drop kick, and Shauna's down again. Logan's going for another cover here. And only gets a uh, two count before Shauna gets her hand on the bottom rope. Oh, clubbing forearm across Shauna's back. And Shauna's fighting back with shots to the midsection. Logan with another clubbing forearm. Sean is grasping her back. And Logan's going for another cover here. Only the two count. Sean is clearly in pain right now. And Logan's not giving her any quarter. Sean drives Logan back into the turnbuckle. Shoulder tackles into him several, two, three. Out of the turnbuckle, she catches a boot to the face from Logan Blackheart. And Logan goes for another pinfall. Only a two count. Logan looks like he's getting frustrated now. He's arguing with the referee about the count. Forearm to the face. Sean is in the turnbuckle. Logan with another clubbing forearm across the chest of Shauna Reed. Looks her into the turnbuckle. Comes in with a lariat. Out of the turnbuckle, another lariat. She reverses this one. And now he's on top of Shauna's shoulders, beaten down. And 
Shauna is going to drop him face first on the canvas. That was a desperation move by Shauna for sure. And both competitors are down, and the referee's starting the 10 count. Logan's up to his knees. Sean is still on, on his stomach. They're, uh, they're at the six count. They both haven't made it to a vertical base yet. Sean and Logan both beat the ten count. Don't mind me. Shauna Reed. Looks like Shauna's starting around as she goes for a pinfall. It's a two count on Logan Blackwood. We're deep into this match between Logan Blackheart and Shauna Reed now. They're both worn out and, and trying hard, but you know, the, the energy's fading. Shauna's got him set up. Looks like she's going. <laughs> Snap, fireman, carry, takedown. Logan's on his back. And the winner, Sean Lee. All right, listeners, this is Meat Hook Jim with the Wrestle Horror Podcast. And I'm here at the Future Great Wrestling Arena where Origins 2 has just wrapped up. And what I, I've got to say, it was just a phenomenal show. Uh, I've got two of the wrestlers here. Uh, one has a very special belt across her lap. The other one is a prophet of pain. I am, of course, talking about the pretty little psycho Shauna Reed and the prophet of pain, Amos. Shauna, Amos, what a phenomenal show. I know. We did pretty good, didn't we? We kind of got our way, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We always get our way, though, so it's fine. Shauna, I saw some emotion during the um, Super Zeta Memorial Ch championship match with Logan their emotions were really running high and Amos was trying to be a little sneaky back there but you know hey hey I told you I was going to stay out of it and I did exactly that and I stayed out of it now when it was all said and done I was different yeah I was he, completely different. he promised he was going to stay out of the match and I said I was going to win this right and that was exactly what I did I didn't say anything about after the match so tell me how it feels about winning this belt that represents so much to you. Um, it just, it's, this winning this belt means everything. I, Zeta took me under his wing, really, you know, taught me, be, helped me become who I am today, the wrestler I am today. So losing him, you know, it hit me hard, and it still has hit me hard. And I don't think I've found that closure that I need yet. I mean, winning this belt is definitely a step forward into finding that closure, but it's definitely helped me like realize that I really am Zeta's legacy and that I will make sure that his name is carried on for the years to come. There ain't, there ain't no doubt in my mind that he was somewhere in this room tonight. I mean, smile face to face, calling you a little witch. I mean, <sighs> Did it? Yeah. You wouldn't want it any other way. Plain simple. Yeah. It's okay. I understand. So tell me, what's up next for the pretty little psycho and the prophet of pain? Take over FGW. I'm gonna first take an ice bath. We got a week to preparate. I got. I have two other title matches this weekend. So you take your you take your ice bath. I'll, I will bring home the bacon and next week it all starts over again well you know i heard uh coming up at the arnold classic at the sports world kids and teens expo uh that you're going to be wrestling one amber o'neill i am i i was first going to be wrestling queen aminata but i guess you know she's a big timer now just got back from schmuck. japan yep <laughs> big time schmuck is what she is so and she was afraid so she canceled and now they've put me with a this, chick who calls herself the bullet babe amber o'neill mm. oh well just another wrestler that i'm going to wipe the floor with 
And you, Amos, uh, what's on your horizon? Anything? You keep in touch with me, man. You'll, you'll see. I'm not, I'm not very you know, social media-like. You know, where I pop up, I pop up. I mean, yeah, that's about it. Mm-hmm. I'm not on the Arnold. I'm going to be in an ice bath probably. Then too, but... That's going to be a long ice bath. <laughs> Don't question him and his ice baths. Okay. <laughs> well, I know you two probably got other things to do, and it's I late mean, at night. I just want a title. We need to go celebrate. Like, Absolutely. Pop the bubble in. Yeah, little, I'm little a late tequila? champion right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, but you know what? We just did. So, <laughs> how iconic. <laughs> well, Shauna, Amos, thanks for taking time to speak with me here on Wrestle Horror. Uh, good luck, or... And congratulations. And go get that ice bath. Your pleasure. Appreciate it, man. Cool. Thank you. All right. All right. It's Meat Hook Jim here with the Wrestle Horror Podcast. And I'm sitting here at the FGW Arena. Origins was off the hook. Of course, you came up on the losing end of this one for once. But in the end, I think you actually won, Mark. Uh, You know, after spending a year with uh, Jackson and just getting to know him better than I already did and just figuring out how really in the end how slimy he was. And I kind of got ashamed of what I did with Jay West and the business we did to where me and Jay had a talk a few weeks back. And, I, you know, I pushed all my chips to the center of the table, trusting Jay West. And, yeah, I lost the match. And I've said it online. I can live with that. You know, I not to brag, but I've beaten Jay enough times to where – Tonight was his night, and it deserved to be his night. And, you know, with me turning and with me rejoining the Top Guns, I think after a year of being with Jackson, everything came full circle. Well, it's been an exciting night, and it really just a huge pop when the Top Guns reformed. Um, But, you know, when I first came to the FGW Arena, militant Mark Magnum, he was, you know, well, let's just say it, Coco Puff. (laughs) Sad that I can laugh at that now, but yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, it's been a long time with me and Jackson, and it was just a road that I was tired of going down. I was tired of being told what to do when I've been doing this for almost 12 years. I know what to do, and the fact that Jackson, I'm not going to say didn't have confidence in me, but he felt he needed to guide me in his direction. I've learned that he's selfish. I've learned that he was all about himself. He wasn't about me wasn't about Jay West. He wasn't about the code. He wasn't about Brian, the owner of FGW. He was always been about himself and about the money and flaunting all that. And like I said, for me to finally open my eyes and have somebody that was a big enemy of mine in Jay West and me and him kind of coming together and making all this work. And I I think that this is exactly where I need to be at right now. Exactly. I can respect that, man. You know, I've been, like I said, I've been watching you since August. Um, I was cheering for you sometimes, even though you didn't know it. Uh, but it really tickled me to see all the streamers get thrown at you every week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking I'm going to embrace that now. But um, you, earlier you said that the biggest pop was the Top Guns uh, reuniting. I think it's more the biggest pop of the night, at least, in my opinion, was me knocking Jackson out. I think that was the biggest pop of the night because it was well deserved. And over a year of FG, oh, in a year of FGW being around, nobody's ever even put their hands on Jackson. And not to brag, I was the first. Fair enough. Well, I know you're busy. You've got things to do. It's time to party a little bit or at least go home with the family. So, militant Mark Magnum. You still going to keep the militant part? Oh, of course. Okay, just making of sure. Of course, brother. That'll never change. All right. I appreciate you taking some time to talk with me here on Wrestle Horror. Good luck in the future. Good luck with the Top Guns, and uh, all the best, man. Thank you, brother. Have a good night. You too. All right, listeners. Meet Hook Jim here, not in the studio, but actually sitting in the Future Great Wrestling Arena, Hamilton, Ohio. Uh, we have just wrapped up Origins two and. This is this is FGW's WrestleMania. It was amazing, an amazing show. Um, I'm sitting here talking with Ripper Blackheart, uh, the manager extraordinaire and father to Logan Blackheart. Unfortunately, Logan came up a little bit short in his match with Shauna, but you know it was a great showing by both of them. A lot of emotion. 
Yeah, even though he did not win the match, I couldn't have been more proud of the effort that he put forth. Uh, I believe Zadie would have been very proud of both Shauna and Logan for the match that they put on in front of this crowd tonight. And uh, as we were saying right before I started recording, uh, you mentioned that every match had some had pulled emotions out of people, and I couldn't agree with you more. Every one of them meant something, and this has been one of the most amazing shows I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah this every single match just drew emotion out of this crowd tonight. Every single match. That's not an easy thing to do, and this wasn't done overnight. This has been a year in the making. Right. Uh, these fans here are very loyal. It's a very loyal fan base. They are very invested into us. So it feels good to be able to give them the payoff like we did tonight. And you know, with with you with with Shockwave being on Wednesday nights, you guys are getting that message out even further about FGW. Uh, and you know, I'm talking about it every time I can talk to somebody about it. This is the little indie promotion that's that is just gaining steam. Yeah, we are the island of misfit toys. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, and you work the circuit. I know you work up at War, and you work for now. Um, and you'd make a quite a drive to come down here. But uh, you always you always put on a show, and I appreciate it. <laughs> like I said, it's the famous. The fans here are so invested into everything we do; it makes you want to do it. I like. I don't mind. I work a f- eight-hour work day. I live two hours away. Yeah. I get off work. I go home. I get what I need for the show tonight, and then I'm on the road down here. And at no time, there's never a time I get off work like I really don't want to go down there today. Right. Actually, all day of work is I can't wait till I'm done here so i can drive two yeah so i can drive two hours <laughs> right and sometimes i won't be out here but maybe 10 minutes at the most but uh, like i said you you can't get I'm, I'm never going away people i hope you enjoy me because i'm not going away well you know i first started coming to future great in eight in august and I was immediately amazed at the crowd's investment in the show. About how much, like I, I'm be repeating myself or repeating you, how much the people are involved and how much they the loyal the fan base is here. Yeah, I mean we had to fight the city together. Right. I mean, us and the fans. The fan. It was fans that show. It was the fans showing up to the city council meeting that. Help put us over that edge to get us here, to get us being able to do this every Friday night. And uh, like I said, we, we have fans get married right in here. Same fan one, she has FGW tattooed on her. That's loyalty. This is, and I've heard her uh, say before, or maybe it was a post uh, on Facebook or whatever, that this is their weekly family time when they all get together and they all come here and it's the one thing they all enjoy that come on i mean got beat the hell out of game night (laughs) (laughs) well you know it's funny because before shelby started training this was our family time coming here when we we first started coming it was the three of us we'd come you know we'd sit in the same spot and and then shelby we, she had always been leaning that way, and we when she went to Cody's fantasy camp, that sealed the deal, and she transitioned from fan to potential pro wrestler. And that, you know, everybody starts off as a fan, and it takes great dedication. Uh, I, it people who are fans understand not just anybody can do this. Right. Uh, people who aren't fans think that it's just a bunch of talking and fake fighting. Yeah. Recent political statements that we're yeah, going I, I, I'll <laughs> repeat what I said, put on Facebook on behalf of pro wrestling. Leave us out of it. 
keep your petty bullshit in Washington and we'll do our thing. And, you, you know, we ain't getting political. You don't need to throw stuff our way. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. Um, so what's up for Ripper here in the future? I mean, I know you're going to you're gonna make an appearance at the Arnold, aren't you? Yes, uh, I'm at the Arnold for NOW tomorrow night. Uh, War Wrestling has the big 17-year uh, anniversary Hall of Fame. I'm inducting Dusty Dillinger into the Hall of Fame. Very nice. And then next weekend, I'm in Akron for OCW. Uh, my client, uh, Grant Andrews, is teaming up with Gino DiCapo. And they're part of a three-way for the tag titles against uh, the champions Warhorse and DD Trash, who myself and Gino just beat last month. That's right, me, me yeah. and Gino defeat DD Trash. Woo-hoo, check which out is, Ripper here. Which is Bruce Gray and, and uh, Ron Mathis, and I now have a victory over both of them. So suck on that. <laughs> well, I can't follow up that up with much except thank you, Ripper. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Always, always great to see you. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yep, I'll be here. Thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on all, all of our social media outlets: Facebook.com backslash Russell Horror, Instagram at Russell Horror, Twitter at Russell Horror on our YouTube channel, The Wrestle Horror Channel. Also, you can find us at www.wrestlehorror.com.